Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is Enjoy Gear Shifting. In the not so distant future, all passenger cars are likely to be replaced by electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles, leading to the extinction of manual transmission cars. Today, manual transmissions have no advantage over automatic transmissions. Except for, it is fun. We can shift, when we want to. We can shift, at the engine speed we desire. We may make shifting mistakes. Or, may stall, at some times. Don't worry about such small things. When we can shift without any shocks. Or, the engine speed matches perfectly allowing for silk smooth shifts. We experience supreme joy. Fortunately, we still have some time left. Before they go away, enjoy them to the fullest. And, if you understand the mechanism of the clutch and manual transmission, you can enjoy gear shifting even more. This video showcases the structure and function of the clutch and manual transmission, smooth upshifting, and double clutching. First, we will review the structure and function of the clutch and transmission, using a typical 5-speed transmission for front-engine, rear-wheel drive vehicles. A clutch consists of a flywheel, clutch disc, transmission input shaft, pressure plate, clutch spring, clutch cover, release bearing, and release lever and clutch pedal. The input shaft of the transmission has grooves that mesh with the teeth on the inner circumference of the clutch disc. Therefore, the clutch disc can slide along the axial direction of the input shaft and rotate together with the input shaft. On both sides of the clutch disc, there is a friction material called clutch facing, which generates frictional force between the flywheel and pressure plate. This frictional force transmits engine rotation to the transmission. When the pressure plate is pressed, the clutch disc rotates along with the flywheel, and when the pressing force on the pressure plate is removed, the clutch disc stops. The frictional force is generated by the clutch spring pressing against the pressure plate. In general, for passenger cars, a diaphragm spring is commonly used as the clutch spring. The clutch spring is supported by the clutch cover, which is bolted to the flywheel. The clutch pedal operates the release lever through a wire cable or hydraulic system for compressing the clutch spring with the release bearing. While the driver is not depressing the clutch pedal, the clutch transmits the engine output to the transmission. When the driver depresses the clutch pedal, the engine output is cut off. A typical transmission consists of an input shaft, a counter shaft, a main shaft, and a shifting mechanism. In the input shaft and counter shaft, the shafts and gears on the shafts are fixed and rotate together as a unit. The gears on the counter shaft mesh with the gears on the main shaft. But the gears on the main shaft and the main shaft are not fixed. So the gears on the main shaft rotate at different speeds. When the driver operates the shift lever, the sleeve moves via the shift shaft and shift fork to engage the gear on the main shaft and the main shaft. Engine rotation is transmitted sequentially through the input shaft, counter shaft, and main shaft. But in fourth gear, the input shaft and main shaft are engaged. In reverse, the direction of rotation of the main shaft is reversed by the idler gear mesh with the counter shaft gear and the main shaft gear. To understand the shifting mechanism, we will start by using a dog clutch transmission, which has a simpler structure than the current manual transmission. The sleeve is spline engaged to the main shaft. The sleeve can slide along the main shaft axis and rotate integrally with the main shaft. The gear is not engaged with the main shaft and it can rotate freely. The sleeve and the gear have pawls. When the driver operates the shift lever, the sleeve moves axially and the pawls of the sleeve and the gear engage. 
the engine rotation is transmitted in the order of the gear, the sleeve, and the main shaft. However, at actual gear shifting, there is a difference in rotational speed between the gear and the sleeve. The pawls cannot engage, resulting in hard shifting. Therefore, the driver needs to operate the accelerator pedal and clutch pedal to minimize the rotation difference between the gear and the sleeve. To alleviate this burden on the driver, synchro mesh transmission was developed. Until the 1960s, dog clutch transmissions were used in some car models. But nowadays, all passenger cars use synchro mesh transmissions. Even today, dog clutch transmissions are used in motorcycles and racing cars. Same as dog clutch transmissions. In synchro mesh transmissions, the sleeve engages the gear and the main shaft for gear shifting. The synchronizer hub with the synchronizer key inserted is spline engaged to the main shaft and rotates integrally with it. The sleeve is spline engaged to the synchronizer hub, allowing it to slide axially along the main shaft and rotates integrally with it. The synchronizer ring and the gear are not fixed to the main shaft and rotate freely. They have small teeth, called chamfer. The surfaces facing each other on the gear and the synchronizer ring have a cone shape. The rotation speed is synchronized by the frictional force, generated by pressing these surfaces against each other. Currently, the clutch is disengaged for shifting, and the gear can rotate freely. When the driver moves the shift lever, the sleeve slides on the synchronizer hub to the direction of the gear. At this time, the sleeve presses the synchronizer ring against the gear through the synchronizer key, and their cone sections generate frictional force. Then, the gear is decelerated by frictional force, and approaches the rotation speed of the sleeve. When the sleeve moves toward the gear side further, the sleeve pushes the synchronizer key inward, and increasing friction force, thus further decelerating the gear. When the rotation of the gear and the sleeve is synchronized, the chamfer of the gear and the teeth of the sleeve are engaged, and the gear shifting operation is completed. To improve the synchronization performance, modern transmissions employ double synchronizer cone and triple synchronizer cone to increase the contact area for generating friction force. Examples include employing triple synchro cone for first and second gear, and double synchro cone for third and fourth gear. Here, we will learn how to smoothly disengage gears. Currently, the transmission is shifted in first gear, the accelerator pedal is depressed, the vehicle is either maintaining a constant speed or accelerating. The rotational force from the engine is transmitted in the following order. From the first gear on the countershaft to the first gear on the main shaft, then to the sleeve, synchronizer hub, and finally to the main shaft. Due to the chamfers of the first gear push the teeth of the sleeve, the frictional force is generated between them. Therefore, even if the driver applies force to the shift lever, the sleeve will not move. When the accelerator pedal is slightly released, the driving force applied to the first gear on the main shaft decreases. On the other hand, the sleeve continues to rotate at the same speed, due to the inertial force transmitted from the tires. At this moment, the friction between the chamfers of the first gear and the teeth of the sleeve disappears, allowing the driver to disengage the gear without feeling any resistance. However, if the driver misses this moment, the sleeve pushes the first gear, the friction force is generated again between them, and gear will not disengage smoothly. To summarize, when you disengage the gear, first apply light pressure to the shift lever, then release the accelerator pedal. If the timing is right, the gear will smoothly disengage without any resistance, making for a pleasant experience. At this time, to prevent unnecessary deceleration, simultaneously depress the clutch pedal while releasing the accelerator pedal. To engage second gear, the driver only pulls the shift lever as the synchro mesh mechanism comes into work. However, in reality, there are often cases where smooth gear shifting is not possible. For example, when the transmission oil is not warmed up, a bit of technique is required. If you disengage the gear from first gear, then stop once in neutral. 
the counter shaft will decelerate due to the stiff transmission oil. Therefore, the speed difference between the main shaft and the second gear on the main shaft is increased, making it difficult to engage the gear. To prevent this phenomenon, especially when the transmission oil is not yet warmed up, it is necessary to operate quickly without stopping the shift lever in neutral. As mentioned before, in transmissions without a synchromesh mechanism, the driver needs to synchronize the gear rotation speed. This method of operation is called the double clutching technique. When shifting up, the driver releases the accelerator pedal, depresses the clutch pedal, and shifts the lever to the neutral position. Due to the second gear rotating faster than the main shaft and the sleeve, the second gear needs to decelerate. The driver engages the clutch while in the neutral. At this point, since the engine speed has decreased, the second gear is decelerated through the input shaft and the counter shaft, and the speed difference between the second gear and the sleeve becomes smaller. The driver then disengages the clutch again, and shifts into the second. When the driver engages the clutch and step on the accelerator pedal, the shift up is complete. When shifting down, the driver releases the accelerator pedal, depresses the clutch pedal, and shifts the lever to the neutral position. Due to the first gear rotating slower than the main shaft and sleeve, the first gear needs to accelerate. The driver stays in the neutral and engages the clutch, and then revs the engine. Therefore, the first gear is accelerated through the input shaft and the counter shaft, and the speed difference between the first gear and the sleeve becomes smaller. The driver then disengages the clutch again, and shifts into the first. When the driver engages the clutch and steps on the accelerator pedal, the shift down is complete. This operation is generally unnecessary in modern transmissions with the synchromesh mechanism. However, in sport driving, before entering into a turn while decelerating the vehicle using the brakes, some drivers perform a downshift using double clutching with brake pedal control. This technique is called heel and toe shifting. Modern automatic transmissions perform an action at downshifting that have the same effect as double clutching. Unfortunately, highly computerized automatic transmissions perform it more accurately, quicker, and without mistakes than we do. But, is that an important for you? When we fully engage both hands, both legs, toe, and heel to control the car just as we want to, we feel the utmost joy. I'll say it again. We don't have much time left. Come on. Let's enjoy manual transmission now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.